AI, how is the music industry dealing with AI? Because you come from that background. You see people like Grimes that are actually encouraging people to use her stuff and then potentially get royalties on the back of it, really embracing it, probably potentially creating a lot of value and making a lot of value. And then I'm sure there's people in the labels that are thinking, no, this is terrible. We don't want these AI Drakes and all these other things out there. How is it dealing with this from what you can see? It's similar to every major disruption in technology meets the entertainment or media industries. So when YouTube first came out, Universal, Sony, and Warner were suing YouTube, yeah. right? And we're freaking out. When you go in to see Chad and the guys back in the day with MC Hammer, back at YouTube headquarters, when they were basically breaking all the copyright laws, that's right, saying it's not our fault, it's our users. People don't. People forget though, YouTube wouldn't be YouTube unless it literally broke the law in the early days. That's right. That's the way a lot of disruption happens. Right? All disruption breaks laws. <laughs> That's until it becomes normalized and accepted, and then I would say corporatized, right? Or you have to, you can't work against them, you have to work with them. If you can't win against them, you work with them. And so I remember, right, when me and Hammer, I dropped him off at San Mateo above Pizza Parlor, he was like, Jason, it's a new company, YouTube, uploading content, servers on your phone, on your laptop, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what? He's like, we're gonna shoot the next music video on a camcorder and deliver it over the internet. And I'm like, yo, this sounds horrible. <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> like this one, they were making like million dollar Britney Spears music videos and Hammer was like, we're gonna shoot our next video on a camcorder at the time and we're gonna upload it on YouTube. And I was like, this is gonna be horrible. This is gonna be whack. <laughs> and, and, and I remember it was Chad, it was Steve Chen, it was just five of them. And I don't think they, they knew or we knew, anyone knew that it was literally going to disrupt content forever. The content was no longer gonna be controlled by studios and corporations and news media conglomerates like CNN and Fox and News Corp. That now everyone could become their own Ted Koppel. That everyone could become their own Diane Sawyer. Everyone could become whoever they wanted to become. And so I remember when my song, I had a song with Bruno Mars, this is a whole nother story, but right before Bruno got signed to Atlantic, he did a, a song with me about Jesus Christ, about John 3.16. And it was about God's love and it was a Christian gospel rap track. And it went viral on YouTube. We dropped it and it was me and Bruno Mars. And then it was going millions of views. And then about six months later, he dropped his first single. I think it was Nothing On You with B.O.B. and then Billionaire. And then I get this cease and desist letter from Atlantic and Warner. And they're like, we're taking down your song from YouTube because it's not authorized by Warner Music. And I remember calling my lawyer, my music lawyer, who's one of the most powerful, Paul Schindler, and he created Def Jam. And so he's like, oh, like, trying to help me as an independent artist who had millions of views of this song with Bruno Mars. And basically Warner didn't want Bruno associated with a gospel track, like a Christian song, right? And so they're like, take this down. <laughs> like why is when people are searching Bruno Mars, this random Christian rap track with Bruno and this random Asian dude named Jason Ma coming up, right? And I couldn't win, right? To this day, that song has been silenced on YouTube, right? And, um, but again, my point is that was 2010. In 2005, when YouTube was launched in 2006 and seven, Warner was suing YouTube with Universal, with Sony and saying, this cannot be, right? This is taken away from our bottom line. This is gonna ruin our entire distribution and music label business. Only later to go, hey, we can't win against them we're gonna to have to work with them. And then they created their partnership deals and then started controlling. I believe the same thing is happening with AI. 
same thing is happening with Web3. Right now, you saw Universal cease and desist and sue whoever created the Drake AI song with The Weeknd. Then you have disruptors, independent music artists like Grimes, who I've been able to work with, uh, with the Avalanche Fund, and I know her manager. He's totally a disruptor, entrepreneur, brilliant. And she's all about, hey, let's not fight against AI. Let's not fight against technology. Let's let AI and technology be our companion, be our friend. Let's work with it. You make a song with my voice, I'll give you 50% of the royalties, right? So that's where it's gonna go, right? Where now, instead of being afraid of people using my IP that I create, hey, if you're a true fan and a believer, create with my IP, create with my voice, create with my content, create with my ideas, but through a smart contract, we're gonna share in that upside together. So I'm gonna let you iterate off of what I make and what I create, and you can create more off of that. Like, as you said, every great rapper came from a rapper before. Every great musician came from a musician before. They were all inspired by, right? But now you can actually authenticate that and track that and show the receipts of, oh, this actually came from Grimes. This actually came from Drake, right? So I think it's just gonna create more, is my point is AI is an open door for more creation, not the suppression of creation, but the actual proliferation of more creativity. And so I think Web3 is gonna be able to protect your IP. AI is gonna give you the ability to create and iterate off of IP to new dimensions and new possibilities. To continue watching the rest of the episode for free, visit our website, londonreal.tv, or click the link in the description below.